Today I would like to show you a few examples from an almost unknown treasure of the collection, a group of 72 artists' palettes. The palettes came to the BMA thanks to George Lucas, who was born in Baltimore in 1824 but spent most of his adult life in Paris. From 1857 almost until his death in 1909, Lucas was the art agent for the Walters and other collectors and would visit artists in their studios as part of his scouting missions. In the 1880s, he became interested in their palettes, which he added to his personal collection of paintings, prints, and other works of art. It is extremely interesting to compare the palettes with paintings by the same artist. Here is a painting by Eugene Boudin, who is known for his seaside scenes, and next to it is one of his palettes. Although this particular palette was not likely used to create this particular painting, it is an excellent example of what I would call a working palette, as it shows how Boudin laid out and then mixed his colors. You could almost see him loading his brush and then applying quick strokes of paint. On this palette, there is even a small sketch of two women with a boat in the background, which is similar to the figures in the right foreground of the painting. Sketches were common on palettes that an artist might give to a friend or patron as a token of esteem. Here is the palette, what I would call a presentation palette, that Ludwig Knaus painted for Lucas. Again, the artist laid out his colors on the left edge, but created this delightful scene of a young centaur playing with a baby goat. At upper right, the artist has dedicated the palette to Mr. G. A. Lucas and signed his own name. George Lucas developed friendships with many artists, and so it is not surprising that their palettes are inscribed with words of affection. However, the notations on a number of palettes provide us with more specific information. For instance, on the reverse of Léon Bonnat's palette, it is written in French, the palette with which the portrait of Cardinal La Vigerie was made, and then signed and dated. Fascinating as the palettes are as objects, they are also an important resource for scholarship. Scientific analysis of the pigment and paint medium can deepen our understanding of painting practice in the late 1800s. And so we have begun a technical study of all palettes, which we intend to make available to researchers.